Okay. Uh, hi, hello, everyone, again. And uh, let me introduce uh, me again. My name is Zixuan Feng, and I go by Steve. Welcome to listen our talk. I'm a PhD candidate in computer science at Oregon State University. My advisor is Dr. Anita Salma. Uh, my research focusing on improving the collaboration in USS. Uh, my research lays the intersection of diversity and inclusion, mentoring, and collaboration patterns. And uh, thank you to my awesome co-speakers, Julia. Yes, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. Let's talk of the last day. It's sunny outside and uh, thank you so much for being here. I am a global technologist at Veeam. We do backup and data protection, but that's not the topic of the talk today. And I thought I love the, the glue work topic. Uh, maybe I can give an intro of how we met. Sure. So I was giving a talk at KubeCon last year in Chicago about my journey from being a non-technical person to becoming a CNCF ambassador, which by the way, I'm a CNCF ambassador. And then he reached out to me because you're, I'm gonna talk more about my journey, but I give, I contributed a lot to open source through non-code contributions. So that's why like we partnered together and it was perfect for, for the topic, glue work topic. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in this presentation, we will share our ongoing research-driven project aimed at recognizing the glue work in open source. So I will introduce the concept of the glue work in a minute. Uh, first of all, and foremost, I would like to introduce our research team. So our work team consists with OSS community researchers, OSS community health experts, and of course, Linux CNCF ambassador, Julia. Uh, this work is sponsored by the Google and the National Science Foundation. So we extend it to all our collaborate, uh, um, thanks to all of our collaborators and sponsors. So as the final talk on the last day, we are deeply great, grateful for your attendance. So appreciate your time. And, uh, and we are not here to overwhelm you with the data or information. Uh, instead, this, we treat this talk as a very valuable opportunity for us to uh, have a conversation with you so where we can engage with the actual frontline OSS maintainers, OSS practitioners. So you are welcome to stop me, stop us at any time and share your experiences. We will have several like live conversation questions. Please engage. Um, so open source projects are mostly volunteer uh, lead communities in which people are from all over the world together to produce and maintain the massive and the complex softwares. Code contributions have been historically acknowledged as the main contribution. So what's the first thing we, we, uh, uh, you have in your mind when you mention OS as a contributors? So you're gonna say how many commits this, this contributor have been submitted? How many patches have been uh, fixed? How many pull requests have been submitted? How many lines of code have been rolled? Like how many repositories are owned? But this is just the one part of the OS as a community. So there are a variety of contributions are remain unrecognized and unacknowledged. So the left side is the survey responses. So we conduct in checking the state of the diversity in Apache. So we received over 300 responses. In one of the questions, we asked the participants, which of the following tasks did you start with the, when you got involved in the ASF? So we find that other than the code, there are lots of other contributions where contributors start their contribution. For example, documentations, decision making, creating website, organizing events. So another study on, the, on your right side, another study from our lab showcases three, pre, uh, three pathways, how people grow in open source communities. So we see there are people from start with the code and then they end up with the non-code. We see people from, from non-code to code. So there are all type of uh, contributions in OSS and all of these beautiful contributions glues the entire OSS community together. So every contribution is important. Mm -hmm. Studies from academia have found that focusing preliminary on the code contribution as a measure of the value in OSS can have negative consequences. So for example, um, overlook the contributions, 
ex uh, exclusion and a burnout contribu uh, contributors. So negative community dynamics and a diversity and the inclusion issues and attrition. So, which brings me to the first question I would like to start with, uh, Julia. Uh, so, what percentage of your OSS work is acknowledged by your peers or organizations? So, I would say a lot of my open source contributions are acknowledged, but they are not code contributions. So, I, th I wouldn't say I'm lucky, but also because I post a lot on social media. So. All my contributions, I'll talk more about them, but like writing a blog post about uh, an open source project can be uh, a contribution. I always post that, so that's why I would say it's a knowledge by the community. Okay, uh, any, uh, any of you want to share your um, um, uh, thoughts about this question? Yes, yes, please. I'm sorry, let me grab a microphone. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, but we can hear you. Oh, fine. Hey, hey, yeah, it's um, for streaming. True. I, I keep forgetting it. <laughs> Thank you. Testing. Okay. Yeah, just send it to him. I think it's working. Let's see? Just give it to him. Yeah, it's working. It's working. I can't speak to big projects, but uh, when I'm working with my friends on projects, they'll usually just be me and a friend, maybe a few people come in with small patches. Um, and in that environment, I do end up getting recognized because it's just me and my friend on the project. And uh, sometimes we'll joke about I end up being the legal team of the group because of how I help with licensing and stuff. So on the small scale, that kind of glue work does get recognized, mm -hmm. but I can I can't speak to how that'll change once I start contributing to larger product mm -hmm. projects where it's easier for that to get lost. Thank you, thank you. Um, Let you me pass to Georg. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Georg. I, um, I, my impression with my own open source work is that it is acknowledged pretty well. And as a founder of the project and as a very vocal person that speaks up and is present, I, I think it's very easy to get recognition where I know others who are doing similar things to what I'm doing and they're helping out and doing a lot and I try to acknowledge them, but they feel like others in the community are not acknowledging them as well because they're also not speaking up. They're doing the website, they're doing the, the repository cleanups, they're doing all kinds of really awesome work that is not seen. And because they don't speak up, no one has a chance to acknowledge them. So that's what I have seen and experienced. More work done in the background, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think it also depends at what level you're making contributions. So, Georg, you, you and I have known each other for a long time. I find my role these days is more technology diplomat and less coder, much less coder. And I think it's interesting because if you look at both open source communities and open standards communities, if you don't have people that are helping kind of set the overall direction and helping herd the cats, which is a lot of what my job entails these days is herding the cats, I think those are contributions whose time frames are much longer. And she knows I've had to deal with getting my mind adjusted to, okay, my time frame was I did X, Y, Z amount of code in a week to, okay, the, this week I spent basically getting us aligned to potentially get to a decision or get to a strategic uh, an end point like, you know, two months from now. So it's a difference, I think, in, in sort of how you get recognized that way. Yeah, yeah, totally valid. So um, therefore, let me quickly say, like, we propose this concept, glue work. So glue work in OSS refers to the contributions that are critical to the project health or community health but that are under-recognized and unacknowledged, such as documentation, such as all you're saying about a community management, mentoring, bug reporting, organizing events. So- Let me just ask something. Yes. How many of you had heard of the term glue work before? Oh, that's oh, nice. Okay. okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, so when we mention about the glue work, 
we could not just simply say, oh, a glue work are just documentations or non-code contributions. There are a lot. Like, I would like to show you one of our preliminary results. This result is a very preliminary, but we have received, uh, we have reviewed like every paper in open source um, that I mentioned about uh, contributions other than the code contributions. And, and we did not find much information. And we also reviewed like 50, 50 uh, blog, uh, open source blog platforms. Not much information funded. So we come up, we propose this categorize. We have temporarily categorized all the contributions into four categories. And so non-code contributions, lightweight code works, community services, and gluing code together. So all, and, and then we categorize them together into three main categories. So for different purposes, for example, project success, community building, and a software building. So such con contributions are overlaid with each other. For example, non-code contributions can be categorized into the project success, success and the community building. Mm, however, so this is just a, like very, um, th this categorization is still uh, in progress. We need to talk to more people to validate. If, you're in, if you are interested, please let me know. So as I mentioned, we have put like extensive efforts, but not much results are existing findings there. They're just a, like, it just self explain these contributions are unrecognized and like um, other than people just self-report, I have done this, I have done that. So challenges may indicate that cultures and systematic biases, traditional metrics used in the open source projects. So we have interviewed people during the conferences from the last couple of days. People could immediately like, like mention all of the guru works they have done. But none of them, they are saying like, oh, just like Georg mentioned, a lot of them saying like, I, I don't see my works have been like well recognized or, or, or well acknowledged. So there, there is a missing information for the community. We don't, believe, we don't blame who is wrong, but there is a missing information for the community for projects that to, 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 uh, to know like who, who they need to thank to and what they have done and how to trace those contributions. So um, I would like to pose our next discussion question. So in your opinion, what prevents the glue work from being recognized in US as a, uh, in US as a project? I origin, originally list some uh, options, but I hide them. I just want to make it like open -ended. Anyone wants to give a try? Why? A lot of it's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Anyone else? The data can't be easily collected or easily yes. tracked. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. You want to show some of this? Yeah. So, um, yes. Um, let me quickly go through the next slide and we'll oh, come sure, back. Sure. Yes. So, um, having discussed the critical but often overlooked role of the glue work in USS, it's my privilege to transition to someone who explicified this invaluable contribution. So, my co presenter is not just me. a participant in the open source community, she is the role of model of the, uh, uh, for the glue workers everywhere and embedding the dedication, support, and the collaborations that makes OS as a project thrive. And uh, he's going to make me yeah. feel shy now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was saying that I started my journey in tech through glue work. And even nowadays, I do a lot of glue work project, uh, glue work in general, uh, as contributions to open source. But now I'm more on the mentoring side as well. But I started a lot with uh, helping documentation localization that I even gave a talk today about that, uh, creating content, so helping out people start out in open source. I did a little bit of everything like blogs, webinars, tutorials online, live streams on Twitch, um, and also some, some other things that people don't find, don't think as glue work, but it's very important. Speaking at events about open source projects, raising awareness, advocating about open source projects. 
because otherwise we wouldn't have contributors if we don't talk about this project at, at conferences like this. No one will hear about the project and we won't have contributors, we won't have maintainers. So all this work done in the background, like he said, is very important, but a lot of times on a knowledge. So uh, other examples, organizing events. I organize a lot of meetups in New York. I'm, I'm based in Manhattan. Uh, I'm organizing also the KCD, the Kubernetes Community Day. It's going to be in May 22nd. You're all invited if you want to come. So all these things, we, we see only like the, the top of the surface, but we don't see like all the hard work we put into that, into making these events happen and, and everything. And I like to, to talk about the term learning public, which helped me a lot, especially at the beginning of my journey. Uh, I come from a, a law background, I went to law school, and then uh, two years ago, I did a coding bootcamp, and everything that I learned, I, I put it out there. Like, I created some piece of content, you know, like I said, a blog post or a YouTube video about, like, even simple things that we think are simple, but for a lot of people starting out in the industry, is not that simple. So, and this is helpful. This is our kind of glue work, glue works that help people out starting out in open source, etc. So here I have just some examples of things that you can do, even if you're not a programmer, even if you're not technical, you can still contribute to open source. And we need these contributions. So, you know, writing and fixing documentation, localizing the documentation, like we like translation, it's more than translation, but it, you know, uh, creating content, opening new issues, triaging the, the issues, labeling, testing features, cleaning up code, organizing or speaking at events, and creating content as well. I have two blog posts. The slides will be available after the, this, so don't worry, we'll upload them. And uh, just some challenges that we were talking, but is again, the lack of recognition, it's very time consuming and we don't get paid for that. Like code contributions, most of, of open, work, open source contributions are volunteer and uh, you know, but they are so important as code contributions like this glue work. Uh, also, there is a lot of emotional labor into that, you know, especially like mentoring other people, new people that want to start in open source. And, you know, you have to be careful with burnout. Uh, it's a sustained effort and uh, you need to, to work on attracting and retain, re retaining more people doing glue work. So there are all these challenges and uh, that's why we need to talk about glue work because otherwise we come to a conference like this and we only talk about technical stuff, about code, code, code. And what about the people that are doing work in the background? They need to be acknowledged as well, we recognize. Otherwise, a conference like this wouldn't exist if not for the work of these other people doing all the glue work. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. So here brings our task. So our goal, our, the product goal is to create a taxonomy of the glue work by identifying its various forms and it determines how much of them can be traceable and specify the means by which it can be traced. Please. We have a question. So when you made your way into working on all of these different things, I'm curious as to what your path or on-ramp was. How, how did you become aware of or how did you make your way into contributing in these different ways? I would say mostly asking for help at the beginning, you know, because all these people that are doing glue work currently, they need help to keep doing glue work and, and uh, asking like, how can I get started? And then they would guide me. Uh, same way as how you, you start contributing uh, code wise, like you ask for help, hey, can you show me how to, to use this package, et cetera, or like guide me on this GitHub or repo. You ask for help, like how can I help, you know, not code wise, what can I do? That's how I, I started. I, I had some help. Um, but at the same time, like looking for, for content out there, videos, etc. I would say that's how I, I ramped up. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing up this question. This this question brings exactly the motivation why we are doing the, this project. So we are just creating the taxonomy. So right now people are doing such glue work, so they are just forming cohorts, helping with each other. But because community does not have a, such a guidance like who they can who 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 they can help with each other. So we are creating this taxonomy. It's not just a providing list of the contributions other than the hardcore contributions, but improve the awareness of such contributions and uh, provide a guidance to the entire OSS communities to understand, to identify, to recognize, to acknowledge, and encourage more people to join the OSS community. So with such a community, we could help in clarifying the spectrum of the uh, contributions and uh, um, enhancing the visibility of these non-technical roles and uh, guiding the contributions, pathways, and uh, facilitating recognizing and rewarding. So moreover, so this uh, taxonomy can also provide inclusivity and diversity and support the project sustainability. So, um, in summary, we are here to improve the awareness. The reason why we are here for reporting our ongoing project is just to improve the awareness of the glue work and the means to, uh, and, uh, and we have a means to have a conversation with all of you, um, this frontline OSS practitioners to understand your thoughts and recognizing the glue, uh, the glue works are beneficial to the entire OSS uh, community and uh, uh, understand how to, uh, where, uh, how to recognize, how to acknowledge, and how to encourage participations, which also improve the inclusion and diversity and uh, equity, creating a better documentation and a communication, and improve the governance and the project management. Yeah, yeah I think. Yes. Do we have questions or anything? Yes, we do have some questions. If you would like to participate, we do have some questions. You can pick any of it and, uh, and, and a participant. Yeah, who wants to answer the first question? Like, first, I want to know, have you done any type of glue work or, or you're, you've done mostly like code contributions to the people that are present here? Have you done like other type of, of contributions besides uh, code contributions? So I'm a 100% no coding contributor. Nice. So similar to you, everything I do is glue work basically. Um, I am part of the training team in the WordPress project and we create educational resources about WordPress to host on WordPress. Mm -hmm. um, so basically my whole team are known, uh, known coders because we all create content, we translate content, we edit content, we publish content. Um, that doesn't mean we don't have coders in our team because we, we make technical content, yeah. so we need people who understand code, but they don't code as their contribution. Um, so I think the biggest challenge we've had is just trying to come up with a system that tracks their, the, the tracks their contributions. Mm -hmm. um, so something we are doing is sort of linking things back to, to GitHub. So if you start making a content, Although you like write the draft in a Google Doc, you will create a GitHub issue that says mm -hmm. I'm making it. So at least we have that data point to come back to. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Like if, the, if a problem breaks out and we have to mediate the mm -hmm. conversation, like that's not something you leave yeah. in GitHub. So how do you recognize that? That's still something we're trying to figure out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I pretty much do like my open source contributions lie in um, project manage programs management, uh, community management and things like that. And some of the things that I'm passionate about is sustaining our communities. And I find that um, sometimes it's hard to actually invite people to do um, work with you. Um, especially if they also have their own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I, I find that like to be like very challenging and I believe that um, sustaining the communities that we build is actually very very important but then um, the process of doing that is, uh, is extremely hard um, so yeah I mean that's just what I wanted to share thank you thank you, thank so you. Much. Here. 
so in my uh, in my open source project, I am primarily a coding contributor, but I <clears throat> I recognize that uh, that that we need to attract uh, contributors to do the glue work, especially of of uh, writing writing documentation and. Uh, you know, there, as as one of the earlier uh, participants said, we we need people that understand code so they can write documentation about how to use our library. But uh, I'm I'm interested in learning more <clears throat> about how to attract uh, contributors to do glue work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you that you know to write documentation, at least the first draft, you need to be a little bit more technical. But for instance, to cor uh, correct mistakes, if you find mistakes on documentation, you don't need to be that technical for, for to contribute. Or you know, if you want to clarify in a way that someone very technical wrote a documentation and people outsiders won't understand, that can be some type, some type of contribution as well. But I totally agree with you about um, yeah, having to be a little bit more technical. You want to share something? I, let me go, go there. You want to you wanna finish something? Uh, no, I was I was just agreeing with you. Okay, That's all. Thank you. I'm also primarily a code contributor, but uh, one thing that I'd like to point out is that I think this winds up presenting differently depending on particularly the size of the project and working on uh, I'll say relatively small as in low resource projects. I think that's a situation where I know something that I've encountered is one of our kind of biggest hurdles is just that we have a lot of code to maintain and not enough coders to do it. So, you know, if, if we get resources, where do we want to put that resources? We want to put that resources into getting people who can work on the code. But at the same time, I have had the opportunity at points to uh, work with people who do more of this glue work. And it's tremendously beneficial to say, okay, I no longer have to think about, for example, like, you know, somebody who uh, was involved in their project who wound up doing QA for us. And that was incredibly beneficial and that was, uh, you know, significantly improved our quality and was stuff that I didn't have to think about, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think s these kind of smaller projects at the same time as they can't necessarily argue for devoting resources to these things, they can also be projects that can benefit the most mm -hmm. from having that because it is able to offload a lot of um, a lot of work from people who maybe have more um, experience in the technical air in yeah. the deeper technical areas from not doing things that honestly they may not even have the best experience to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're totally right yeah I want to first thank you for making this a very interactive session, last day of the session. I really appreciate that you involve all of us. It's very, very engaging. And second, your, to your last question, how can open source projects improve the visibility and acknowledgement of glue work contributions? One thing that I have seen across different projects work really well is to do spotlights of contributors and highlight them and tell their story and show or, or put them invisibly up and with their agreement, you, you'd say, hey, I would like to highlight your contributions to the project and talk about what you are doing to make everyone's life better. And then you can talk about the things that are otherwise not showing up in the data or metrics. And as a, like what we just heard, as someone who is really appreciating this, you know about it. So let others know that you appreciate it. And at the same time, it raises awareness about like all the code contrib oh not code all the contributions that people can do besides code. You wanna add something? Sure. I mean, I again, I work in very very small projects. I don't go to big projects. And me and my friend, uh, our biggest project is developing software that we use in a larger group of uh, players. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a big community uh, that's just not involved in the software at all. So I, I can add on to that of recognizing contributions of every time we update the software, we're going to make an announcement and say, hey, you need to come download this. And one of the things I'd like to do more for the project is add in 
uh, thanks for people who contributed. And we've already done a little bit of it in the past, but I think one of the, I'd like to most see uh, thank yous for here is this person, mm -hmm. here's what they did yeah. for the project. Mm -hmm. And to answer the first question you posed of what non-code contributions have we done? Of, for me, I think the most impactful thing I've done is in these small projects, because it's just me and my friend, mm -hmm. we have different skill sets. He's a fantastic programmer, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot about licensing and uh, managing these projects. So I you know, set, here's the license we're using, I put all the right announcements in, I make sure that we're complying with licenses and doing copyright work and such. So it's been most impactful for me to recognize what's missing, what don't these people know how to do, mm -hmm. how can I help with that? Yeah. I love that everyone is engaging with this. Thank you. <laughs> um, I am really new to the open source community. I haven't actually contributed to any projects yet. But that's kind of what my question is about, which is how do I know if a project wants or needs my skills, basically, to know if I can contribute to a project? Mm -hmm. By skills, you mean non-coding, like yes. less technical? Yes, I'm a UX designer, oh, for nice. example. I would say, first of all, all projects would, would need, you know, would need more contributors. Independently of what it is, we all can improve open source projects in a certain way. It's, it's just like you having to find the project that you like, the community that you like. So what are you interested in, you know? Uh, there are so many types of projects, more like front-end stuff or, or, or back-end or, or infrastructure. You need to find out, and there will be a project for that. And then just be, start being part of the community. Ask, go on Slack, ask, hey, how can I help? These are my skills, I'm a UX designer. How can I help? And, and people would love to, to have you there. I, that's what I think, yeah. If anyone wants to add, like people that, uh, contribute or maintain other projects if they want to add to this? You want to you wanna say something? No, yeah. Um, I, I totally agree with what Julia said. Before the taxonomy we created, maybe uh, I would say uh, maybe another six months, we will, we will see if we can publish the paper about that so that the people, so that the products can have this taxonomy in their documentations. You will have a clear guidelines where you can contribute, where you can fit your skill set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's one of our goal here. I'm reminded of your being an open source zero presentation, <laughs> which was provocative, but um, really thought provoking. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I was going to share was actually it has to do with the last question there, and that is um, I've all of my contributions over these last decades I think, <laughs> have been a hundred percent non-code mm -hmm. contributions. Where I started originally was in the OpenStack and now Open Infra mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that they used to do on the last day of their conferences held in the spring and in the fall was to hold an awards ceremony. Mm -hmm. And one of the awards that they used to give out, and I can't remember now <laughs> if it was carrying a bucket or Carrying water, yeah, or, or uh -huh. yeah, yeah, and that was one of the ways that mm -hmm. um, you know I had received that at one point, which then, uh, of course, made me want to lean in even further mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. contribute. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just one of the other ways to recognize yeah. the glue work, which actually is a new term mm -hmm. for me. So, mm -hmm. thank yeah. you for mm -hmm. that. You want to add? Yeah, one other thing that I'll add is that I think one of the other difficulties of attracting um, non-code contributors is because it's a different, I mean, particularly for highly technical projects, mm -hmm. right? You know, by default, you're targeting a very technical community. So I think one of the uh, difficulties in attracting people in these other important roles is trying to Break, partially break out, breaking out of monoculture, um, and generally being able to reach out to people who are not necessarily um, already deep into mm -hmm. technology. And this has a lot of parallels into just general 
um, trying trying to improve diversity and trying to reach out to communities who you know don't necessarily feel like that this is for them. Mm -hmm. um, and in general, um, you know, I, I wind up uh, having various interests in you know getting more more different types of people into STEM as a whole. And I think there's a lot of parallels there of how do we attract people who just normally wouldn't even think that uh, tech is for them at all. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So I think also the size of the project is, and this was mentioned earlier by somebody, but I mean, most of my roles now are in helping foundations, right, actually deal with open source projects. So I was one of the people that helped start Academy Software Foundation way back in the day when I was at Autodesk. And what we do there is it's almost glue work plus plus. It's not at the individual project level. It's that helping drive the foundation to make sure that the, all these projects are funded, to make sure that we have resources. And so it's almost that management level even above an individual small project level. So I think there's, there's I think various areas that you can get involved in terms of, of this kind of glue work. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to add to the conversation is uh, technical, the way that we use technical. I pulled up the definition on Merriam-Webster, and it says technical is to be marked by or characteristic of specialization. And specialization, it does not mean we are specialized in coding. So we, a UX designer is also specialized in a particular skill set. A marketing person is specialized in a particular skill set. Uh, another definition is technical is of or relating to a particular subject, or it is relating to a technique. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk, and this is something, that's why I picked up on this. We talk about coding and non-coding activities and I, I still think that the glue work that is being done is still involving a lot of technical skills, mm -hmm. like video editing and the stuff you're doing, Julia. I, I that's not a skill set that I have, but it seems very technical from yeah. my point mm -hmm. of view. Mm -hmm. But it, in it my might, area, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm technical in my area, and like you said, I love the, def the definition. People can be technical in different things. Right, mm -hmm. and yeah. so I'm I'm very mindful with how we talk about these different kinds of activities and contributions that are being made, so that we value them all and yeah. we're not discounting something as non-technical mm -hmm. when we actually mean they are not writing code. They're still being technical. Yeah. They still have a really good this. skill set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great input. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are out of time, yeah. and uh, thank you, Georg for giving the definition. It's just a perfectly join the perfect period of our yeah, talk. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate all your time uh, attending our last talk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I hope you hope enjoyed. You enjoyed the conference. Uh, we are available on, on social media and you know, to continue the conversation. You'll hear more about glue work in the future. So it's just a new term that we need to raise awareness in the open source space. That's why we decided to give this talk as well. So thank you so much. Thank you.